During the Second World War, armies across Europe and the Pacific faced one of the most relentless enemies of all, weather. From the monsoon rains of Burma to the frozen mud of the Eastern Front, keeping men, supplies and shelters dry was a constant struggle. Standard tarpaulins were heavy, hard to replace, and often tore under battlefield conditions. Yet, out of necessity, soldiers and engineers discovered an unlikely substitute, one made not from fresh canvas or rubber, but from recycled materials so durable and waterproof that they often outlasted the original tarps themselves. What they created became one of the most overlooked survival innovations of the war. Waterproof sheeting made from repurposed oilcloth, wax cotton and oil jute, all drawn from salvaged uniforms, tent scraps and supply sacks. When armies ran out of tarps, ingenuity took over. By 1942, shortages were choking every army. Rubber supplies were cut off, canvas was prioritised for vehicles and tents, and waterproofing compounds like paraffin were scarce. Soldiers couldn't wait for factory shipments. They had to improvise. On the British and Commonwealth fronts, engineers began collecting worn-out uniforms, truck canvas and supply sacks coated in linseed oil or paraffin. These were cleaned, re-waxed and stitched together to form new waterproof sheets. The result was remarkable. Layers of cotton or jute fabric brushed with a mixture of wax, grease and sometimes even melted soap created a flexible barrier that repelled rain and mud as well as factory tarps. Soldiers used them to line trenches, cover foxholes, wrap supplies and even fashion makeshift ponchos. The process was so effective that some field manuals began recommending it as an official emergency substitute for canvas sheeting. The strength of these recycled tarps lay not just in the fabric, but in how the fibres were treated. Oil cloth, for instance, was originally made by coating tightly woven cotton with boiled linseed oil a natural drying oil that penetrates deep into the threads and hardens over time. The result was remarkable. Layers of cotton or jute fabric brushed with a mixture of wax, grease and sometimes even melted soap created a flexible barrier that repelled rain and mud as well as factory tarps. Soldiers used them to line trenches, cover foxholes, wrap supplies, and even fashion makeshift ponchos. The process was so effective that some field manuals began recommending it as an official emergency substitute for canvas sheeting. The strength of these recycled tarps lay not just in the fabric, but in how the fibres were treated. Oil cloth, for instance, was originally made by coating tightly woven cotton with boiled linseed oil, a natural drying oil that you know penetrates deep into the threads and hardens over time. When soldiers replicated this in the field, they often used leftover machine oil candle wax or animal grease. The principle was simple. Fill the gaps in the weave with a hydrophobic substance that, well, repels water. Waxed cotton worked the same way, with paraffin or beeswax replacing oil. Once applied, the coating bonded with the fabric fibres, preventing moisture from soaking in, while allowing just enough breathability to stop mildew. The result wasn't just waterproof, it was, honestly, quite durable. Unlike modern plastic tarps that crack or shred, these old-world methods produced materials that could take a beating, be re-waxed or re-oiled when needed, 
and continue serving for years. In the Pacific, United States Marines stationed in the Solomons often reuse jute sacks from supply drops, brushing them with coconut oil and soot from fires to form a natural water barrier. In the Pacific, United States Marines stationed in the Solomons often reuse jute sacks from supply drops, brushing them with coconut oil and soot from fires to form a natural water barrier. German troops did something similar with their Zeltbahn, a multi-purpose shelter half made from impregnated cotton canvas. When supplies dwindled, they re-coated the fabric using a field mix of pine tar, wax and diesel oil, keeping the material supple and waterproof. For anyone interested in survival, bushcraft or long-term homesteading, this forgotten craft remains one of the most practical skills you can learn. Making your own recycled tarp doesn't require factory equipment, just patience and the right materials. Start with old cotton canvas, denim, burlap or jute. Avoid synthetics as they don't absorb the oils or waxes that form the waterproof seal. Two, five, seven. So, to start, you'll want to melt beeswax or paraffin wax in a double boiler, or, you know, you can mix equal parts linseed oil and mineral spirits to create a liquid treatment. Then, just spread the fabric flat, brush the mixture on evenly, and gently heat it with a hairdryer or over low sun to allow it to penetrate the fibres. Once it's dry, the material stiffens just a bit, but well becomes completely water repellent. For extra strength, you might apply two coats, paying special attention to the seams and edges. This very process was used by field engineers to produce covers for ammunition protect wooden crates from rot and even insulate the undersides of trucks against mud. And when the coating wears thin after months of exposure, it can simply be reapplied. So really, the tarp never truly wears out. This same process was used by field engineers to produce covers for ammunition protect wooden crates from rot and even insulate the undersides of trucks against mud. When the coating wears thin after months of exposure, it can simply be reapplied, meaning the tarp never truly wears out. Modern polyethylene tarps may seem convenient, but they come with serious drawbacks. They rip easily, degrade under ultraviolet exposure, and once damaged, can't be repaired. Recycled waxed or oiled fabrics, by contrast, grow tougher with use. There's also a survival advantage. Plastic tarps are noisy in the wind and easily spotted while waxed fabrics are silent, natural in colour, and blend into the environment. They also insulate heat far better. One reason soldiers continued to use oiled canvas well into the Cold War for tenting and gear covers. Even in peacetime, rural farmers and explorers adopted the same technique. Before synthetic coatings existed, pioneers in North America waterproofed wagon covers using animal fat and ash, while post-war sailors coated old sailcloth with linseed oil and chalk dust to make weatherproof boat tarps. Even in peacetime, rural farmers and explorers adopted the same technique. Before synthetic coatings existed, Pioneers in North America waterproofed wagon covers using animal fat and ash, while post-war sailors coated old sailcloth with linseed oil and chalk dust to make weatherproof boat tarps.
The principle was always the same. Use what you have, make it last, and trust the chemistry of natural oils to do the job. Today, anyone can replicate this wartime ingenuity using recycled materials that would otherwise go to waste. Old canvas bags, worn-out jeans, or thrifted cotton curtains can all be transformed into long-lasting waterproof covers. For a simple field application, just mix one part beeswax with one part boiled linseed oil and apply it hot. Let it set for 24 hours before using. If using burlap or jute, coat it twice. First with wax, then with a thin layer of oil to keep it flexible. A single 6 by 8 foot sheet treated this way can serve as a ground cover rain fly, firewood wrap or emergency shelter. It can also be repaired endlessly. Just heat a bit of wax, brush it into tears or seams, and the surface seals like new. A single 6 by 8 foot sheet treated this way can serve as a ground cover, rain fly, firewood wrap or emergency shelter. It can also be repaired endlessly, heat a bit of wax, brush it into tears or seams, and the surface seals like new. This method is not only sustainable, but, you know, historically proven, tested by soldiers in some of the worst conditions ever recorded. The recycled tarp represents more than just a wartime hack. It really embodies the mindset that defined survival during the world's darkest years. When supplies ran out, people didn't surrender to scarcity. They turned waste into resilience. What began as a battlefield improvisation became a model of sustainability that, honestly, modern survivalists and historians can both learn from. A recycled, rewaxed tarp made the difference between soaked rations and preserved supplies between frostbitten soldiers and dry bedding. That same principle applies today. Resilience is born from knowledge, not convenience. If this deep dive into wartime ingenuity and forgotten materials inspired you, do subscribe to Relic Logic and share this video. Every lesson from history holds a survival secret, sometimes hidden in the simplest things, like an old scrap of cloth that could keep a man alive through the storm.